on this particular one, uh, we're looking at uh, calcium carbonate. Here's the formula. Complete the table to show the number of atoms in limestone. This is Ca. It's the element calcium. Number of atoms in calcium carbonate. There is no um, number next to calcium, so it has to be 1. Here's carbon. Its symbol is C. You can get that from here or off the periodic table. Uh, there's only one carbon in calcium carbonate. There's no number next to C, so it has to be 1. Oxygen, uh, symbol is O. We can see it here in carbonate. We can also get it off the periodic table. There's a little 3 next to the oxygen, and that means there are 3 oxygen atoms. Okay, the answer to this one, what's, what are these subatomic particles called that give the uh, atom its mass? It's the protons and neutrons. In 2.2, the atom that's got a mass of 12 is carbon. If you look on the periodic table, you'll see hydrogen's got a mass of 1, lead is 207, I think, and oxygen is 16, so it has to be carbon. What is the relative atomic mass of an element? It is the total number of protons and neutrons added together. Okay, so it's the total number of protons and neutrons added together. 2.4. Describe how you can calculate the relative formula mass of a compound and you should answer using the terms atom, element and relative atomic mass. So to calculate the relative formula mass, we need to add up the number of atoms of each individual element. We need to look at the mass of each element and then we can add that up. So if we've got our element, each element has a mass, uh, has an atomic mass. So each element has an atomic mass. So if you calculate the total total mass for each element that is the number of atoms of the element multiplied by its atomic mass so that will give us the mass of each individual element and then we add together all these masses to get the total mass Uh, concentration is a little bit like density, so it's going to be mass divided by volume. And here we can see a mass and here we can see a volume. This is a mass and this is a volume. Well, and this is a mass and this is a volume, but we want the mass divided by the volume. And A and B are not correct because they're the volume divided by the mass. Concentration is grams per decimeter cubed, not kilograms per decimeter cubed. So it's not D, so the answer is C. Okay, so just to go through, how do we work out the Cal uh, to calculate the relative formula mass of a compound, we need to answer it in terms of element, atoms, elements and the relative atomic mass. So each element has an atomic mass. So we want to calculate the total mass for each element that's in that compound. And that's the number of atoms of that element times the atomic mass of that element. 
we add together all of those masses to get the total mass of the compound. Uh, here we want to find the concentration. Concentration is mass divided by volume. Uh, the first two are volume divided by mass, so it's definitely not those. And then of the two left, uh, we have to decide is concentration grams per decimeter cubed or kilograms per decimeter cubed. It's actually grams per decimeter cubed, so C is our answer. Looking at 3.2, a solution is made by dissolving salt in water. What's the correct term for salt when dissolved in water? Uh, what's the correct term for the salt when dissolved in water? It's the solute. The water is the solvent, so it's not the it's not solvent. Uh, precipitate means to come out of solution. Insoluble means it won't dissolve. Uh, so solute is the only one that's left, and solute is something that is soluble in water. Sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid react to produce sodium sulfate and water. Balance the equation. Okay, so if we look at how many sodium, oxygen, hydrogen, and I'm going to take this as sulfate, SO4, on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, sodium, oxygen, hydrogen, and sulfate, this group. I can see on the left and right-hand side, I've got one sulfate group. On the left hand side, I can see I've got one sodium group and one oxygen that's not in the sulfate. I've got two hydrogens here and one hydrogen here, so I've got three in total. On this side, I've got two sodium, I've got one sulfate, I've got, uh, in terms of oxygen that's not in sulfate, I've got one which is in the water, and I've got two hydrogen here in the water and there's nothing else so two so i can see that the sulfates are balanced up but the sodiums are i've got more sodium on this side than the other side so to balance them up i'll put a two in front of this sodium so now i've got two sodiums i've got two oxygens and i've got two hydrogens here and two hydrogens there which makes four in total okay so let me look the sodium and the sodium are balanced up, but I can see I've got two oxygen and four hydrogen on this side, whereas I've got one oxygen and two on this side. So if I put a two in front of this, that means I will have four hydrogen and two oxygen, and I can see the oxygen's balance and the hydrogen's balance. So this is a balanced equation. Okay, what is the relative formula mass for sodium hydroxide? So sodium hydroxide we can see here is sodium, oxygen and hydrogen. So the sodium is 23 and then we add the oxygen which is 16 and we add the hydrogen which is 1 and we get a mass of 23, 24, 34, 40. So it's a mass of 40. In the reaction, how does the mass of the products compare with the mass of the reactants? So if we look at the mass of the products and the mass of the reactants, the mass of the products must equal the mass of the reactants. That's the conservation of mass. The, the amount of mass you start with is exactly the same as the amount of mass you finish with. So the, we say here the mass of reactants equals the mass of products so they're the same so they are the same number five potassium chloride can be produced by heating potassium and chlorine the equation for the reaction is shown describe this chemical reaction in terms of the number of atoms of each substance involved Okay, so we can say that two atoms of potassium, which is what we've got here, two atoms of potassium, and this Cl2 is a molecule, and one molecule of chlorine, 
react to form and what do we find we form two um two potassium chloride to form two potassium chloride substances they're not molecules two potassium chloride substances okay we could say one molecule of chlorine contains two atoms one molecule of chlorine contains two chlorine atoms okay and then finally uh, just on this page uh, the student investigated the reaction of magnesium with oxygen the student calculated that 4.8 grams of magnesium made 8 grams of magnesium oxide and here's the equation so what mass of magnesium of oxygen is required to produce 8 grams of magnesium oxide so we know that magnesium here we've got 8 grams of magnesium and it reacts oh sorry my fault we've got 4.8 grams 4.8 grams of magnesium and it reacts with how much oxygen to form 8 grams of magnesium oxide so this is the magnesium oxide so 4.8 plus what gives us 8 grams when we work it out it's 3.2 grams so we need 3.2 grams of oxygen with 4.8 grams of magnesium to give us 8.0 grams of magnesium oxide so our answer is 3.2 okay so we need to read all the way through this but we're making magnesium oxide from magnesium we're heating it in this crucible and it's going to burn uh, we make magnesium oxide four times we use the same amount of magnesium it wants us to calculate the average or the mean mass of the magnesium oxide so we need to add these together and then divide by the number we've added together so 7.36 plus 7.06 plus 7.38 plus 7.38 equals Okay, so the uh, total for that equals 29.18 grams. That's the total. So the average is 29.18 divided by 4 because we added 4 together. So let's divide that by 4. And that gives us 7.295. It wants it to two decimal places so that... Uh, here two decimal places this five is it well it's it, we need to round it up so because this is five we need to round it up we round the, the two nine up to three zero so seven point three zero so that equals seven point three zero grams uh, the student produced less magnesium oxide than expected why well the first reason would be that he probably lost some magnesium oxide so lost some magnesium oxide uh, maybe it blew away because it what it is a powder so maybe it blew away the second one is that perhaps not all the magnesium reacted not all the magnesium reacted so we didn't get as much magnesium oxide as we thought we would get Okay, and the final one, a student made two solutions, solution A and B. Uh, a contained 5 grams of copper sulphate in 50 centimetres cubed of water. B contained 10 grams of copper sulphate in 100 centimetres cubed of water. When they added B to A, the student thought that the new solution was more concentrated because it's got more copper sulphate in. 
is the student correct? Explain your answer. So let's work it out. So A has 5 grams in 50 centimetres cubed. So what does that work out in terms of concentration? So you've got 5 grams in 50 centimetres cubed. That's the same as 1 gram in, uh, sorry, 0 0.1 gram in 1 centimetres cubed. So if we do 5 divided by 50, so 5 divided by 50, it's 0 0.1 gram per centimetres cubed. Okay, let's have a look at B. We've got 10 grams in 100 centimetres cubed. I'm hoping you can see that these are the same ratio. So if we multiply 5 by 2, we get 10, and 50 by 2, we get 100. They're the same ratios, but we're showing that um, we're going to get the same concentration. So 10 divided by 100 is 0 0.1 gram per centimetre cubed. So the student is wrong. because they're both the same concentration. We've shown that there because they are both the same concentration. Okay, so is it correct? No, the student is wrong and we've explained our answer, the same concentration and we've shown. So not only have we said it, but we've shown it.